Hi, I'm Dr De Bruin, and this video is a quick walkthrough of how to answer this exam question from the energetics topic of AQA AS chemistry. The question, this is a Hess's law question. So it's all about this idea that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route taken. In other words, it doesn't matter how you get from A to B, as long as you get there, the enthalpy change will be the same. Now, I would usually approach a question like this by drawing a Hess's cycle. You don't actually have to draw the Hess's cycle in order to get the marks. This is usually a three mark question, but I would always suggest that you do. And the reason for that is that very, very commonly we see students getting the right numerical value, but the wrong sign for the answer. Now, if you've drawn a correct cycle, but then followed it the wrong way around, you still get one working mark for doing that out of the three marks that are available. But if what you've done is to do it numerically backwards, then your working is incorrect as well. And so you don't get any working marks at all. And so that's why I would always draw the diagram. Now, the first step in drawing that diagram is to reproduce the question, the equation that you've been given in the question. And obviously you have this already written down, but it's useful to have it in your answer space so that you can make it part of the cycle. And underneath this, I've written elements. So you don't get any marks in this question for saying what the elements are and what their standard states are. So you may as well just save yourself some time and just write elements in a box. Um, I'm using enthalpy changes of formation that are given in the question, so that's why I'm going from elements. Now, the first thing that I can do now is to add in some arrows for the substances that are themselves still elements. So, for instance, the calcium here, I know that the enthalpy change there is zero because the calcium was already in its standard state as an element in the box. So by definition, its enthalpy change of formation is zero. And I can do the same thing for the vanadium here. Then I've been told in the question that the enthalpy of formation for calcium oxide is minus 635. But I don't have just one mole of calcium oxide, I have five moles. So that arrow is going to need to be five times minus 635. And then I've also been told that the enthalpy change for the reaction as a whole is minus 1615. So I can write that in as well. Now, this is going to seem like a bit of a silly thing to do, but just as an exam technique thing, before you work out your final enthalpy change, I would always literally write on your exam paper, start and end. And the reason for doing that is that it just makes it clearer to you when you're stressed and under pressure in the exam, which way are you going up this arrow? How are you getting there? So basically I'm trying to go up this red arrow, but I can't go up this red arrow because I don't have the information. So instead I'm going to go from the green start all the way around as my blue arrow shows me and still finish up at my red end. So what I know is that the enthalpy change from start to end going up the red arrow, in other words, zero plus, let's call it X, must be equal to the enthalpy change if I go up my arrow to vanadium and up my arrow to calcium oxide and then backwards along my um, whole chemical reaction arrow. So that's why it's minus minus one six one five, because we're going the wrong way up that arrow. We're going right to left instead of left to right. So because we're going the wrong way up the arrow, we need to change the sign or do minus that minus number. So if I then gather together all my terms, I'm going to get X being equal to minus 3175 plus 1615. And that gives me a final answer of minus 1560 kilojoules per mole for three marks. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you are finding these walkthroughs of A-level chemistry exam questions useful as part of your revision or just your ongoing A-level chemistry studies. If you are enjoying them, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.